it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. This is today's only segment of Riding with Rick. Uh, I'm starting to scale back uh, video frequency to focus on video quality and topic quality. Uh, but I'm gonna do the Riding with Rick thing. Uh, but I want to drop in and talk to you about something that's going on. And I've kind of strayed away from it because something the, the old man taught me, my pops, my great grandfather taught me was two things you don't get into discussions about, religion and politics. And I'm about to do both. Uh, but normally I stay away from this kind of stuff because people don't, when discussing religion and politics, people don't use their mind, they use their emotions, their heart, uh, their sentiment uh, and tradition. And it totally erases any sense of critical thought, uh, examination, and anatomation of facts and data, uh, the uh, observance of historical uh, implications, and all of the other things that you should be able to actually do if you're going to have that discussion. So I normally stay away from it, uh, but we're we're here now, and we'll several days in. Yesterday made the deadline for all the people who had been indicted in the uh, vote tampering, uh, election tampering uh, in Georgia, which included uh, former President Donald Trump, uh, former New York Mayor uh, Rudolph Giuliani, uh, and a number of other people of relevant relevance in the political sphere. And what I have noticed is that you can look right down the line of Democrat, Republican, Black uh, supporters, especially Democrat, uh, you know, cheering on things. And my thing is, I always say be very careful when the pendulum is swinging that you don't get so caught up that it catches you on the way back. That's the first thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna to put together a very detailed examination of the two-party system. I've already done it before. I've written about it in depth um, and explored it um, in two very, very detailed writings. Uh, one called, uh, it's not a, a Tea Party, it's a Confederate Party. The other is exploration of the two-party system. And what I can tell you is, what I would start, if you really want to just get an uh, understanding of how politics works on a geopolitical level, on a local and national level, and how the game is played, I would start with reading some of the books from Zygmunt Brzezinski. I would start with the grand chessboard to understand how the game is being played, how it works, and how people are manipulated, how propaganda is used, the entire generation are creation of false patriotism by way of propaganda. The, I mean, the thing that drives our belief in who America is around the world and so much more. You need to understand how that's done, how the Cold War was won, and so much more. But if we're going to talk about this whole thing, the one thing I'm going to say here, because what, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your honest opinion about what's going on with these indictments. And I'm going to share some, some facts with you. I'm not going to get into any opinions on my side. I'm going to share some facts with you, and I'm going to ask you some questions. What I want you to do is actually go into the uh, comment section, answer the questions, hit the like button, hit the share button, because I want people to participate in this, because what I hope is we actually get into an honest discussion about what's happening and not about how we feel. So the first question I always ask is, how can a group of people, not naming the people, how can a group of people who consistently complain about a particular system oppressing them become completely unglued and fight to the death to defend the same system? First and foremost. Second of all, in the 60 years that blacks have been hitting the polls in increasing numbers since the voter right acts and all of that and you need to understand why there was a need for a voter right voter rights act and i cover that in the two-party system and in the uh, uh it's not a tea party it's a confederate party uh understanding what's going on and how uh 
Uh, but you need to ask yourself, okay, since blacks have gone predominantly Democrat in the last 60 years plus, we have turned out in increasing numbers to the polls to vote every presidential cycle except one, and we vote 90% Democrat. Now, you have to ask yourself, in voting 90% Democrat, during the Democratic administrations in which Democrats control both the House and the Senate and the Oval Office, what did blacks gain? And I mean, literally, statistically, socioeconomically, uh, home ownership, all the different ways that socioeconomic uh, relevance is understood and measured. In what ways have we gained? Um, then look at how we are told via media via media to feel about certain people and my question is again I want to be very clear also I have no hearts in this I'm neither Democrat nor Republican I don't trust either of them they are two the right wing and the left wing they belong to the same damn bird that bird's been shitting on the head of black people since day one so you have to understand how each wing move each wing serves a purpose but the party isn't in control each one has alliances to the military industrial complex to the prison private prison industrial complex to big pharma those are the ones who are benefiting from the politicians in office not the citizens now based on certain racial caste uh dynamics some people sit better than others in it as individual citizens but this is about big money, power plays, and elitism. Racism has, from day one, been the guardian of the gate of elitism. This is really about who has the power. And whoever has the wealth has the power. And this is about keeping the masses at bay and getting the masses to support the expansion of wealth and the exclusivity within the very nature of wealth. So, again, here we are. So, the question is... What, what have have they done? Again, now, outside of dude just being, I mean, abrupt and against everything that the system stands for, what specifically has Trump done? Not to the system, not to politics or Democrats, but specifically to blacks. Now, ask yourself a question. What has Biden, now in office, done specifically that negatively impacted blacks so that is that question now what you have to ask yourself is with these indictments the thing that I notice I'm paying attention not to the hoopla not to the everybody yeah you know cheering on Trump and everything like this again I have no hearts in this race. I'm not a fan of none of the damn people like that. I don't trust them none. Uh, I don't have a personal liking for Trump. Uh, I do see him differently than most people see him, uh, but he's not my damn hero. Uh, but what I tell you is, I'm watching something happen, and it's been happening long before we got to this point. Nobody's asking why, on a time that this dude is being indicted, but have been indicted on, on mul in multiple different states uh, is now indicted uh, now in Atlanta decides I'm not going to show up to the debate no need to basically a major flex if you understand politics everybody shows up and they go after none of these people actually go after dude interesting you know uh not, not how they could have and the crazy thing in after it's all over with he did not lose one point this dude is 30 freaking percentage points against the closest competitor nobody's looking at that nobody's looking at no matter what they do here what it means what it means is the democrats understand that's a problem and here's the thing even if he's indicted and he's at there's nothing that says he can't run indicted. So if they can't get a conviction and disqualify him, this dude could still run and win, which he would actually do right now if you're paying attention. 
Biden don't stand a damn chance. Biden, I don't even know if Biden know his name right now. But some of the things that Biden has said and some of the things that Biden has done since he's been in office, blacks ought to be really concerned about that. But he's a Democrat. He can't be racist. But I'm going to leave that up to discussion. But here's my thing. And I want to be very clear here. Our play isn't in trying to play the game of politics. We don't have the power source or the power base to do that right now. Doesn't mean we don't need to be aware of it. Doesn't mean we don't need to participate. We can't hang our hats there. What we got to hang our hats is in building a base, in actually building a base. How are we educating ourselves? How are we educating our kids? How are we storing and accumulating and building wealth? All of these things are things that we absolutely need to be aware of. Um, we need to have our own systems and start building. These systems don't serve us. They were never designed and meant to serve us. We have a responsibility to understand that. So what I want you to do is I, I'm really holding a lot of stuff in because I don't want to ignite conversations outside of the scope of how someone is already thinking because I want to hear and see and I'm going to take the comments and I'm going to address it, but I'm going to address it with data. I'm not going to address it with my opinion. I'm going to literally go down and I'm going to put it together. I'm going to address it with data because we, what we need to look at is we need to be able to understand we've been played. The idea that everybody that's Democrat is for black people and not racist and everybody that's Republican is for white people and are racist is the biggest game being played on black people, period is that some kind of way these people on this side and the average black person can't tell you why blacks who were predominantly Republican switched. And if you can't explain that, you can't possibly understand what's going on right now. And so my thing is, look, I mean, just think. You gotta ask yourself and don't go to the easy answers. That's how we keep getting mollywhopped is they throw us out there and they trust that we're going to flow with our emotions because uh, Donald Trump breaks every freaking rule of the stereotype of a U.S. president. The way he talks, the stupid shit he says, all the stuff like that. Yet the dude has won the presidency once, almost won it a second time, and is now leading to be the representation for the Republican Party again. He's not stupid. He's far from stupid. He's beating them at their own game. And I can't tell you any more than that. Every rule that you don't break as a politician in his position, he's broken. And so they are trying to make him pay for it because when you really look at what's going on, there are a lot of things that we've been taught to believe that just simply aren't true. Again, I'm not an advocate for Republicans nor Democrats, Trump nor Biden. Uh, anybody else that's going to run. I'm not a Barack Obama fan. The only thing I liked about Barack Obama and Michelle Obama is the family presentation that they presented. And it seems to be pretty solidly real because it's still going on, but you never know. But I like that. I like that it wasn't no damn drama, no damn cheating, none of that stuff like that, that, that you know, that they would have loved to throw in it would have been a representation of black people, not just him. So other than that, I know a whole, AFRICOM is, that's on uh, Obama. If you don't know what AFRICOM is, look up AFRICOM. You wanna know how uh, Barack Obama, a junior senator from, from the state of Chicago, where he was, uh, I mean, state of Illinois, where he was a junior senator, never wrote any legislature as a state senator or a uh, national senator and yet ends up uh, hopping uh, Hillary who was the shoe in at one point to be the next president and he basically hops over if you want to know why you got to do your research AFRICOM was a big reason for that uh, the face for the the face for the uh, he had the face for the move to do what needed to be done. And you got to read up on that. And again, I can go on and on and on, but I want to wait because I want you guys to give me the stuff we need to talk about, we need to address, we need to look at um, and examine. And I want to 
push critical thought. Not who you like, not what you think, not what's going on, because I'm guaranteeing you there's nobody out there that's clean. And that pendulum, pendulum is swing, swinging one way, and the uh, rabbit will eventually have the gun, the pendulum is going to swing the other way, and it's been going that way for years. And Democrats have... I feel sorry for the sister in, 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 in Georgia, really, because Democrats have a very, very long history of using up black faces, putting them in high places to do their work, and then discarding them in very, very dark and nasty ways. Look at all the DAs in the middle, uh, in the Midwest that got put in right after Mike Brown and the subsequent years of Ferguson, and, and uh, underwritten by billionaires and I'm not gonna call no names, underwritten by billionaires, and that's that. So I'm about to get off, I'm getting ready to do something, I'm trying to pull up and they're looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm gonna get off of here. If you believe in what we're doing, click the like button, click the share button, show some love and show some support, donate, all that good stuff, I'm out of here, peace.